Eddie Harris, a former member of the USA Special Forces, pushed himself harder to find the assassin who had just slain renowned scientist Dr. Alexander White. Eddie Harris dashed through the congested streets of Dallas while the person he was after fled into an alleyway moving with superhuman agility. The assassin's quick, precise motions suggested something far more sinister as he drew in on the figure, who easily vaulted over a fence. He kicked in, following his military training, and now he could see the target's face. This was no ordinary murder. The killer's brother Samuel's mentor Eddie's thoughts raced, as this confirmed the reports he had heard about aliens targeting prominent human figures. The chase ended abruptly in a private courtyard, and the alien turned to face him. Its eyes shone faintly, like nothing he had ever seen. Despite the alien's strength and superior fighting abilities, Eddie lunged for the gadget, knocking it away, and the two engaged in a vicious hand-to-hand -hand battle. Eddie managed to deliver a crippling blow that sent the creature flying to the ground before he could catch his bewildered. Eddie wasted no time in racing to his car and heading toward his brother Samuel's lab because he needed answers. The alien said something in a language Eddie didn't understand, and then clicked a hidden button on its suit, dissolving into a fine mist and leaving Eddie alone. As Eddie arrived, Samuel, a brilliant scientist, was already packing his face pale and his eyes wide with terror. They're here, aren't they? Samuel questioned, his voice cracking. They've already killed Dr. White, you're on, Eddie replied. They're list too. Taking a deep breath, Sam Samuel explained that the interstellar governing body, the Galactic Council, views humanity as a threat and has sent assassins to kill anyone who could speed up our technological advancements because they're afraid of what we might become. Taken aback by surprise by this knowledge, Samuel nodded and gave Eddie a secure phone number to contact. Colonel Jonathan West, a friend of Dr. White's, is the leader of a group known as the Boogeyman Earth's Covert Defense Against Alien Threats. Eddie placed the call, and an hour later, a black SUV arrived at the facility. Colonel Jonathan West, a wise old man with a stern countenance, came out, assessed Eddie with a glance, and nodded approvingly. Eddie Harris, I assume you've heard of your abilities. The Boogeyman, a diverse team of elite operatives trained to combat alien threats, was introduced to Eddie inside the base, which was equipped with advanced technology, some of which was reverse-engineered from captured alien devices. The atmosphere was tense. Follow me, West said, leading them to a hidden underground base, but kept everyone focused and aware of the stakes. West gave Eddie an update on their current circumstances. We've been aware of the Galactic Council's plans for some time, but they've escalated your brother's research, so we need to safeguard him and figure out how to stop these assassins. Eddie met the team, which included Dr. Karen Lee, a scientist developing defenses against extraterrestrial technology, and Lieutenant Maria Sanchez, a brilliant strategist. The introductions were quick, and since there was no time to waste and an alarm went off warning of an impending attack, the boogeymen jumped into action. Even though Eddie was new to the team, swiftly adjusted to their procedures, fortifying the base and getting ready for the assault. Eddie's military background proved invaluable as he worked with West and the others. The alien attackers were relentless, employing stealth and advanced weaponry, but the boogeymen's combination of human ingenuity triumphed and held off the alien tech. Eddie battled beside them, his tenacity driving him at every turn. He also managed to seize an alien device, which they promptly dissected as the dust settled. West gave Eddie a newfound respect, saying, You're a natural. We could use someone. Eddie looked at Samuel, who was assisting Lee with the captured device, saying, Like you, I'm in whatever it takes to protect Earth. Samuel approached with a piece of alien technology. It had coordinates and served as a meeting place for the Galactic Council's agents on Earth. Eddie replied, Let's do it. With a sense of urgency and precision, Eddie and the boogeymen prepared for their mission. The extraterrestrial device they had taken had coordinates to a distant woodland in northern Europe, which the crew gathered in the base's briefing room. Colonel West started out the meeting with a tight but concentrated attitude. Eddie, you'll be with me, Sanchez. You take point on perimeter security. Our target is an alien rendezvous point, and we need to attack them hard and fast in order to gather intelligence and disrupt their operations. Eddie nodded, mentally getting himself for the mission. He had always been a lone wolf, but now he was a part of a team that relied on each other's talents and trust they boarded a stealth chopper. Lee, you'll stay here and continue researching the gadget for any additional intel, and flew under the radar to the prearranged site. As they got closer, Eddie peered down at the terrain, his keen eyes seeking for any indication of the enemy. The dense forest provided both problems and cover. They landed a little distance from the coordinates and started walking. 
Eddie felt a mixture of excitement and readiness because of his training, but the stakes were higher than ever. After an hour of making their way through the forest, they arrived at a clearing in the middle of a collection of trees. The knight offered cover, but he also concealed potential threats. Eddie gave the crew instructions to spread out and take positions so he could clearly observe their objective. A high-ranking alien officer was now giving commands to the others. West's voice came through the airpiece on my mark, and we engaged. Remember our mission. Eddie studied his rifle, his sights focused on the officer. The seconds felt like hours as he waited for West's orders, and eventually, the order came go. The clearing erupted into turmoil as the boogeymen launched their attack. Our goal is to capture that officer if possible. We need information. The cop attempted to leave, but Eddie and West were on him in an instant. A brief but fierce battle concluded with the officer overpowered and detained, while the rest of the squad rapidly neutralized the two aliens before they even realized what hit them. The alien officer was placed in a high-security cell, and Dr. Lee started her interrogation using a combination of techniques. The remaining aliens and guarded the area, West approached the captive, his countenance steely and intent. We have questions and you're going to give us answers back at the base. Eddie watched from the observation room, his mind racing with questions about what the Galactic Council's true agenda was and how many more assassins were out there. As the interrogation went on, they discovered that the aliens were not just targeting the officers. Translation software and psychological tactics were used to break through the officers' defenses. The Galactic Council had a deep fear of humanity's potential, especially with the recent technological advancements spearheaded by scientists like Samuel Eddy felt a surge of anger and resolve we need to take the necessary action. Important figures, but were also scouting for weaknesses in Earth's defenses. West was told to strike back, saying, we can't just keep playing defense. West nodded, agreeing. Then Samuel entered the room with a pale but determined expression, saying, I've been working on something that would be useful. There's a gadget that can intercept their communications, and if we can position it near enough to one of their outposts, we might be able to pinpoint the location of their command center. Eddie glanced at his brother, feeling both pride and worry. The next mission, which Eddie knew was risky, but was their greatest chance at changing the tide against the boogeymen, was for the men to enter another alien rendezvous point, place Samuel's device, and retrieve the information they needed. It worked, Sam. Eddie and his group were preparing for the next expedition when they stood in the darkened armory, double-checking their equipment. The weight of their mission weighed heavily on them, yet they all moved with a calm assurance, since Samuel's device, which held the key to intercepting extraterrestrial communications, was safely packed in. Colonel West went through Eddie's kit one last time. We're going into a known alien outpost. We place the device, acquire information, and order them to leave. Eddie... You and Sanchez will handle the gadget, while the rest of us will guard the perimeter after they go. Eddie's senses were on high alert as they approached the outpost, the glow coming from their footsteps muted on the forest floor beneath the cover of darkness. The team's cohesiveness was clear as they moved like well-oiled machinery, exchanging hand signals and whispers. Through the trees, evidence of alien technology emerged. The outpost was a hive of activity, with aliens moving in systematic patterns, Eddie and Sanchez broke away from the group and headed to a viewpoint that overlooked the center of the encampment. Sanchez said, We need to find the central console, which is where the gadget will work best. Eddie looked around, his eyes settling on what appeared to be the command center. He pointed, and they moved closer, dodging patrols and taking advantage of the topography to get to the building Eddie took. When Sanchez started assembling the apparatus, Eddie's heart raced and he beckoned for Sanchez to conceal as he took aim with his silent weapon sensing that the aliens were almost upon them. Each second was a test of their nerves. Close call device is almost complete. Eddie kept watch. Every muscle strained for action. The device emitted a quiet hum as it activated, sending out waves that would intercept and decode alien communications. They just needed a few more shots. When Eddie fired, dropping them silently, Sanchez exhaled in relief. Eddie realized they didn't have much time left when the gadget finally finished setting up, and Sanchez gave a thumbs up. Minutes later, the remainder of the crew, commanded by West, engaged in a diversionary combat on the opposite side of the outpost. The sound of gunfire and alien weaponry boomed through the jungle. Eddie and Sanchez proceeded fast but cautiously, counting every step they took as they finished with the rest of the crew at the extraction point. West's eyes were sharp, and they started their retreat. 
the return journey was much more dangerous because to increased alien activity in response to the diversion. Eddie nodded the gadget and we got what we needed. The crew assembled in the command center where Dr. Lee was monitoring the device's transmissions and decoding the interceptor signals. The air was thick with expectation as Eddie paced and his mind raced with possibilities. We've got something. A communication from the alien high command instructions and plans for their next major operation, Dr. Lee said, breaking the stillness. Wes leaned over the console, his eyes narrowing as he processed the information. This is big. They're planning a large-scale attack on multiple human cities mean we have to move quickly. Eddie felt a burst of resolve. We take the fight to them. We can't let them carry out this plan. Wes nodded. Yes, but we need to coordinate with other units. We need more than just our team. This is war. The global defense forces had gathered their finest and brightest, a combination of military strategists and season op agents, and Eddie stood in the middle of the briefing room, his intellect alert as he took in the faces surrounding him. Colonel Dr. Lee, who had decoded the alien transmissions, added to our advantage. Wes started the briefing by projecting the intercepted alien coordinates onto the screen. We've identified key targets across multiple cities, and their plan is to strike simultaneously to cause maximum disruption. Our task is to stop them before they can mobilize. Eddie's crew, the Boogeymen, were given the most important target, a central hub thought to be the Operations Command Center. The room became silent as they realized we had intercepted their communications. This gives us the element of surprise. Eddie caught the colonel's gaze with determination in his eyes. We won't fail, sir, the Boogeymen. West's voice broke the silence, announcing that everyone has been instructed on their individual tasks and that failure is not an option for your squad. As they climbed onto the transport, a calm resolve descended upon them. This was what they had been prepared for. The transport flew quickly and low, avoiding detection as it reached the target. Each member knew their job and the significance of their mission. The crew, led by alien command hub Eddie, went over the plan one more time with his colleagues. We will sneak in, lay the explosives, and escape. Samuel will take care of the technical parts, while Sanchez will watch our flanks. Together, we will travel through the dense woodland surrounding the alien base in silence. The boogeymen's discipline and training allowed them to get around most of the alien guards without any problems as they approached the base and used the darkness as cover. When they reached the entrance, Eddie motioned to Samuel to turn off the security systems, and the young tech specialist worked. Eddie's heart was pounding in his chest, but his fingers were moving swiftly over the control panel. In a matter of moments, the door swung open, and the crew was inside the base. They had to navigate a maze of corridors and alien technology while dodging patrols and security cameras. When they arrived at the central command room, where the alien commanders were planning the attack, their attention never wavered. Eddie and his group took up position and placed explosives at strategic locations throughout the room. The aliens, lost in their thoughts, were unaware that Samuel was connected to the mainframe. Eddie's instincts kicked in defensive positions, and we need to hold them off until Samuel finished downloading crucial data and simultaneously planting a virus to the alien network. He whispered steadily, despite the high stakes. Suddenly, an alarm blared. One of the patrols had discovered their presence. When the crew was finally spread out and able to take advantage of the situation, Eddie took aim and fired accurate, lethal rounds. The alien guards retaliated with force, but the boogeymen held their ground through the fierce combat because of their teamwork and training. Samuel's voice broke through the confusion. Eddie gave the order to retreat, and the crew battled their way back down the hallways as the planted devices detonated, creating a chaotic base that provided them with the necessary cover to escape. The data was secure, the virus was released, and we needed to move quickly. Eddie took one last look back at the now smoldering base before jumping aboard as the transport lifted off, allowing the crew to flee as they shot out of the entrance and ran toward the extraction spot. The transport was waiting, its engines buzzing with readiness. Eddie realized that this was only one fight in a much wider conflict, so even though they were relieved that their objective had been accomplished, the war was still ongoing. Back at the command center, they were met by applause and cheering. Colonel West's face was stern, but his eyes glowed with pride. Well done, boogeymen. Your actions today have given us a fighting chance. Dr. Lee approached Edie, her attitude serious. The information Samuel got is priceless. It includes locations of further alien sites and detailed plans for future attacks. Eddie nodded, feeling a sense of achievement mixed with the constant weight of responsibility. 
The team dispersed for a much-needed rest, and Eddie lingered, studying the maps and plans that covered the walls of the command center. Each marker symbolized a potential threat and a challenge to be met. The journey ahead was long and dangerous, but he was confident that they would travel it together.